morning. I don't know which way to, t- to turn for the light today. Good morning and welcome to today's episode of My P.I. Dream. Today is Tuesday and it is uh, day 54 on the build schedule out of Villa Feliz. Uh, today, as you know, we are going to be continuing, hopefully finalizing and finishing up that rebar work for the beams. I think we're all, we're all the way to the, uh, the patio on the very uh, far back of the house right now. And then they'll be doing more framework, formwork for the uh, for the floors, and the uh, and then eventually, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, mm, maybe Thursday. I don't know. Uh, they will actually start doing the matrix, the crisscross pattern for the actual floor, uh, where they'll be pouring the concrete. They'll be doing the reinforced uh, steel inside there. So today, one of my goals uh, when I get out there is to actually do some more research on solar manufacturers. And, uh, and try to find some sourcing for someone in the Philippines, in Luzon, and come out and do it, like a consultation and possibly sell me a product. Uh, I already contacted one company, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, publicize some of my, my experiences with some of these companies. The, the first one, I, and I've only contacted one so far, and I sent uh, on their form, on their website, it said, you know, for more information, contact, and I contacted this company, and they sent a response back, and they told me, first of all, they, they, they want money up front. They want a consultation fee, which is understandable. And, uh, but I thought the consultation fee was a little bit high. And what I did was I re- replied back to them. And I told them I thought it was a little bit high. I expected maybe about half the price that they were charging. And, uh, and I told them that well, we are running a uh, vlog here. And, and, uh, and we're actually uh, doing our experiences with uh, communicating with companies for things that we would like to buy. And you would think, you would think they would say, oh, (laughs) it's like a quid pro quo kind of a thing. Oh yes, well, you know, we would like to sell you our product and it would be great for you to advertise our product uh, online. Uh, But mm, such isn't the case around here for some reason. I don't understand the marketing strategies in the Philippines yet. I'm trying to, but I don't understand it yet. You would think if somebody's gonna promote your business, uh, they would be more than willing to com- at least communicate with you, but oh well, uh, maybe I'll get better experiences from another company. So anyway, I am going to uh, head out to the site now. Uh, I babbled on enough here this morning, so uh, let's get out there and get the day started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. What, you, what do you have there? You have scissors? You have scissors? scissors. And what? Oh, you have scissors? Well, no, you, I, I, I don't need to be near sharp things. I'll, I'll end up cutting myself. And what are you doing? Are you making? It's a game. It's a kite. You're making a kite? And are, are you going to fly your kite? Does it fly in the air? Like that? <laughs> Okay, good good luck with your kite. I was <laughs> Bye, I see you later. See you later. Good morning, girls. Good morning. How are you today? I like I like to see all your smiling faces in the morning. Good morning, boys. What are you what are you doing today? I'm playing Gortopia. It's is that a, like an online video game? No, this is an online game. Oh, on online? Oh, I see, I see. Good morning, Roy. Hi. How are you today? I'm tired. You're, you're always tired. Yeah. You can't, you're not supposed to be tired in yeah, the morning. Is, Where's your lovely wife this morning? Yeah, my lovely wife's taking a bath. She's taking a bath. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, good, well, good for her. At least, at least you have water. Yeah. I have no water right now at my house. I'm the drum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have my, my water. Oh, good morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they put a tent take a bath. Oh, oh you I, I <laughs> oh, oh, you haven't taken your bath yet? Oh, okay. <laughs> but you have water. I don't have water yet. Oh. Yeah. You have? Yeah, I only... Water every morning? Every morning from... The whole day? No, no, not the whole day. Oh. Only from about 5 to 5.15, about 5.15 in the morning, cool. no okay. water. Till about 9 or 9.30 in the morning. 
So I have to get up. So I get up at 4:30. I, I have enough. I can. I always get up at 4:30 and I take a shower at 4:30 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but that's the only time I have water. So I can take a shower, and then I make sure I have enough water in the bucket. So when, when I when I cook breakfast in the morning. Use before. Not the shower. Use tabo. Is that the tabo? I use, I use the, yes, I use I do. I use the tabo before 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 I figured out the time schedule in the town. I always use the tabo. The tabo is very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh, no, I boil water in the kettle. Oh, okay. And then I put one kettle inside my bucket and I use the tabo and I take a I take a shell. You have to deal the cold water. You take the water and then. Oh, very cold. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good in the afternoon when you've been sweating a lot. Yeah. That cold water is very refreshing. So I don't mind it. But not first thing in the morning when I wake up. I want a, a little bit warmer a bath when I wake oh. up. Hey, good morning, Tess. Good morning. Magandang umaga. Magandang umaga to you. How are you today? I'm fine. Oh, I was just telling them what you made last night, that omelet with the fish in it. Was was the best one that you've made I'm so far. The be, it was the best. Yeah, it was I'm so good. good. And uh, that and the was it chicken tenola? Chicken tenola. Then chicken tenola. Combined. Combined was very good. Combination. Was perfect. I was talking with my wife last ah. night, and she said, and I put, I, I showed her the picture of what I was eating. Morning. Ah, good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. Uh, so yeah, she said. Uh, she said, oh, you're that chicken tenola. I said, yeah, that's right. She could see from the camera. She could see who it was. And I said, I told her, you're the best cook in, oh, in the world. You. You're the best. <laughs> Speaking of the best cook in the world, what is for tonight? Uh, you want uh, vegetables and fish? Vegetables and fish. What else do you have? And uh, chicken, fried chicken. Fried chicken. And let's, vegetables. Let's do fried chicken and vegetables. Okay. Okay. Right. Have a good day. Good morning, Yolanda. I, I didn't see you yesterday. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hey, sweetie. How are you today? Fine, good. What is it? What is it? What is this? Is this a coffee machine or what is it? Coffee machine. Yeah, it's a co coffee machine. Yeah. I didn't know. Like, uh, drink coffee. I didn't know you had a coffee machine here. Five pesos. Five pesos. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah? cup of coffee. Oh, you. Oh, five pesos. My brother. Your brother. Oh, so this is. Is this your business right here? Yeah. The coffee. <laughs> I ne you know, I walk by here so many times, I've never seen that right there. I will have to try it sometime. Hey, hey Yolanda, you have, do you still have, uh, yesterday I was hearing, oh, you do. You have the salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar. And yesterday. Only seven pesos. Seven pesos, yeah. And yesterday I got the onion ring, it's seven pesos also. That's what I got yesterday. This is the combo I got yesterday and it was great. Let me see how much how much change I have here. Fourteen. Only fourteen. Uh, only five, ten, fifteen. Just just like yes just like yesterday. <laughs> just ah uh, salama. Uh, okay. I will see you guys later. <laughs> have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs> Are you are you feeling better today? Are you, are you happy today? I am so glad to see your smiling face this morning. <laughs> I will see you later. Anyway, uh, as I was going through the town, I, you know, I always stop and I talk with folks. I actually ran into the Baranga Capitan, and uh, I told him, I said, you know what, I'd like to talk with you about, because uh, you know I have the water problem, and if I have the water problem, it means everybody else in my block and that portion of the Baranga also has, has a water problem. So I said, uh, hey, let's, let's talk, let's sit down and have a talk, because I want to talk with him to see what the problem is with the infrastructure. I think. I think maybe it's just a matter of capacity. I don't think they have a very large storage uh, for the water that they have to meet the needs of the community. 
So uh, maybe maybe if we can have a little talk and we we'll find out, uh, maybe if they just need a little bit bigger, if I find out what the cost is involved or something like that, uh, maybe we can come up with some kind of solution. Maybe, maybe I can donate a little bit to help them with their, uh, their problem. I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, I, I won't live there forever, but it'll help the people in the community. So uh, I'm going to try to sit down and have a talk with him in the next couple days. So uh, we'll see how that goes. As you can see, everybody is on track, everybody's got their duty and ex they're executing their duty as, uh, as they normally do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I just want to show you something. Uh, I'm actually in the, you can see I'm in the, uh, the basement garage area right here and they're getting ready to, they're putting all the forms up uh, in preparation for the floor, which is going to be the roof here to the garage. But if you look at it from this perspective right here, uh, this column on this side over here and this column on this side, this is going to uh, show the boundary for the garage door that's going to be uh, placed in this area right here. So you can see where I'm standing right here. You see we're about two meters down uh, from the ground level right there. So you can see that all this is going to have to be removed. This will be like a parking area on the outside ground level with the crushed rock, uh, the gravel on for the floor on the outside. And then You'll, it'll slope to the right and start going up the hill that makes us up to the, the driveway on, on the street side over there. So just imagine at this point that all this is gonna be gone and this will this will all be done by hand, the, the digging for that. We're not gonna have an excavator for that. But a lot of people ask the question, why do we do all the labor, the manual labor by hand and not use excavators for these? Well, when you have a giant job like this entire this entire uh, basement that had to be dug, that's when it becomes, that's the most practical time to actually use an excavator. And also, and it, it would have been quite time consuming because it would have taken us 30 to 40, probably 30 to 40 days for these guys to actually dig all this out. And it would have, it would have set us back quite, quite a bit on our schedule. So the, any of the other jobs that we have around here, whether it's a cistern or septic tanks or anything like that, we choose to use the, uh, the labor uh, the manual labor here uh, and the main reason that we do that uh, it's because the price for an excavator and the price for manual labor for the amount of people that we have are about the same 
The only thing is, is when you use the excavator, uh, you're actually taking uh, money away from the laborers here. And uh, this act, they, they rely on this money to provide food on the table for their families and to uh, send money home, for again, for their families. So I would much rather take just a little bit longer to uh, have this job completed and, and help out the locals than I would to worry about at the time. I'm retired, so it's not a big deal for me. And it makes a big difference for these guys' families. time and the guys are breaking for some lunch over there and I just I just want to point out one thing before I go back over to Baha Kubo and grab my lunch maybe we'll do some Baha Kubo time but I want you to look do you see the way that they're doing Ho hopefully the wind isn't too bad I apologize for that but it's uh, the wind is picking up a little bit anyway you see the the way they're doing the matrix for the wood and then they're putting the plywood on top of that well that's the foundation for where they on the top of that and that's going to give the uh, the baseline for the concrete that's going to be poured inside there and I asked I asked my building because this is the building up here is, is, is a little bit different from the way it is in North America and other places around the world but uh, specifically for us I mean we use mainly like 2x12s 2x10s that we use inside our for our floors and then we, we put gypsum or dry rock or something like that but this is all concrete this, this is a whole different creature so when they actually run the rebar and all the pipes and everything inside it run wires and plumbing stuff like that they they i was wondering why they were being so meticulous and detailed about all the nails inside there and it almost it almost looked like oh they're gonna leave that and it's gonna be a subfloor well they, they're not gonna leave any of that that's all gonna be ripped out but they have to maintain the integrity of the the, the precision of the levelness uh that's what i'm looking for the levelness of the all the, the the plywood forms that are on there and this is what main this right here all this little matrix they have and the support is going to be a lot of support under there and the support's going to basically be the support that they have now as well as bamboo uh, sticks as well as there's going to be steel bars and critical points inside there that have the screw the threaded uh, threaded screw inside there so that they can adjust the height and everything like that so they spent a lot of time making sure that this is all level because when they pull that down and there's nothing but the concrete there, the concrete, your roof inside, it needs to be nice and flat and level. Well, it is actually after lunch and the guys are just starting to get back and start work again. I wanted to do a Baha'i Kubo time uh, during their lunch break while it was quiet out there, but what I found that we've got quite the breeze coming through here today, which the breeze is kind of nice, it keeps you kind of cool. But it's also wreaking havoc on my microphone, on my uh, my camera here. So I kind of set up this little uh, makeshift windscreen thing. It's kind of ghetto, but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to work. I'll, I'll find out here in a minute when I review the video. When I, what I want to talk about today is I, I contacted two solar companies. I just want to give you my experience so far in the solar companies that I, that I contacted. So anyway, the first company that I contacted was a company called Solaric, and they're out of, I believe they are out of, let me look on, uh, they are out of Makati uh, in uh, Metro Manila. And pretty much a lot of them are out of, out of the Makati, Metro Manila area. Uh, but this was the first one. And let me tell you the experience that I had with these guys. So I sent them the online form. I, sent, I said I'm building a new house, and I want to do a solar installation, and I would like a uh, consultant to come down and uh, tell me what I need, and uh, and tell me what the cost is involved with that and basically suggest a plan for me and I received an email back from them and the first thing they said inside their email uh, was that uh, they want a 4,000 peso consultation fee uh, to send somebody down to look at my place and I thought to myself like I said this morning I said that 4,000 pesos just for consultation I thought that was a bit high and uh, and they didn't even offer to say that if you choose them and and purchase their product that they would uh, credit you for that consultation fee. They don't even say that. And and uh, then again, uh, when I sent that email to them and told them I thought it was a bit high, is there some way, even if they had a rep in the area speaking with somebody else, is it possible? I asked them, is it possible for them to just swing by 
and even uh, hopefully get a reduced cost on the consultation. And I never received any email back from them. So that's my experience with Solaric. It's my opinion, when you're trying to sell something to somebody, you should go out of your way. Uh, customer service should always be number one, and I didn't get a warm uh, fuzzy from that company. So then, today, I contacted a company, and the company is called uh, Solar Philippines. And uh, this is the experience, it's, it's initial, but this is the kind of experience that I want, uh, that I would expect. I sent an email to them, and uh, the email I sent to them, I immediately received a reply back. They have an info, and that was the, let's see, it was, oh, it was inquiries at solarphilippines.ph. So I sent a, and I gave them uh, some of my details, and said I would like to have somebody uh, for, to give me a consultation. And, and I received the re reply back from a uh, May Rhoda, uh, and they are also out of out of Makati City. So oh, I, I think all the real big businesses are up in that area, but they probably have satellites and, and other uh, branches in different areas. I mean, immediately she sent me an email back and said, uh, oh, the first thing she did, she asked for some of the information they want a site address. Uh, your last three months electricity bill, which I can't give them that because I, I don't have an electricity bill yet for... for I don't have a house yet. Uh, and then they want roof plans and, and target area of solar if available. So what I did, I sent I sent her a, a picture of the front of the house and I gave her the contact uh, information, uh, contact of myself and my builder. And immediately after I sent back to the, to, that to her, she immediately sent something back, literally within minutes, and it said that uh, I will be in contact uh, with pre pretty much in the next 24 hours by somebody by the name of Vic. So my initial, my initial uh, feeling from this company is very responsible and I'm looking for somebody like that. So, and, I, and I will do a follow-up in tomorrow's episode <clears throat> if I receive something back from Solar Philippines and we'll see what that's all about. So my experience, whenever you go to any of the solar installer sites here in the Philippines, you'll, you'll get a, a page, basically you can make a selection. And what it looks like, they, they kind of, uh, if you have this type of setup for your house and you want to use like one refrigerator and an air conditioner or just a refrigerator and some computers and some lights or if you have two air conditioners or if you have two refrigerators, uh, two refs or something like that and they match up a solution for you and they give you prices on there. And I'll show you what they offer on their sites. Well, anyway, I have a few minutes that I can actually uh, go over some of the comments inside of here and add it to today's uh, episode on top of what I just talked about, about the uh, solar companies. So anyway, uh, there were many, many replies, many comments about DOG, and I, I thank everybody for uh, their concern, and, uh, and, they're, and they're also the concern for me losing my friend. But, th but that's okay. You know, the thing is, I'm, I'm hopeful that that dog is in a, a real good place now, and he has a yard to roam around and everything like that. I asked the neighbor, and they said, and they said, yeah, his, the, the, his brother's house has a, a large area for dog to be able to run around, and that's the most important thing. And uh, and then I got lots and lots of comments about David's house. Please stop asking me about the prices and things like that. Please, con if you're interested, contact David. I, I left on that uh, video in the description block there is his email and his phone number uh, you can ask him any question that you want to he's already said he's received uh, several uh, email responses uh, based on the, the video so thank you for those who are actually using that that uh, engine right there to actually contact him and ask him a question and I'm sure David's happy about that and he does he has a, he has a beautiful house and and, the, and a lot of the questions were why is he why is he uh, selling it after uh, it's only two years old? Well, again, the, I, I put it in there, but a lot of people don't read the, the comments, so I'll put it in the video here. David actually has a job working for the oil, shale, some, some, something in the oil industry in the United Kingdom. Uh, he has a, a solar company he's working on over there, and he also has this, this new venture that he's working with, uh, with, with oil. Or it has something to do with energy and oil or something like that. And that's his new job. He actually uh, he was he was working that, and he came back uh, for the month of uh, April into May, and he's going to go back over there. Uh, he has to, he has to get back to work, and what he wants to do is he wants to sell the house here in the Philippines, and he wants to set up house and home in the United Kingdom, which is his, uh, the original place he started from. Uh, so that's the answer to that one. So hopefully I don't get any more questions on that, but that's okay. If I do, <laughs> I'll answer it. <laughs> A lot of nice comments about uh, the use of the drone. Of course, that was the second time that they used the drone, and I'm, I'm going to get better. I had some problem with the, the firmware upgrade. I have to bring it back out again and test it. I think i got to do an IMU calibration. I think you always got to do a compass calibration and things like that, gimbal calibration. There's all these kind of calibrations you have to do on these drones. 
Uh, but I want to bring it here because uh, on the lot next door over here, I, since they actually cut it because it's going to grow back really fast, I kind of want to walk back there and I want to take the drone and kind of put it over. I try to maneuver around where the dry riverbed is. Even though I said you're going to have a great view if you bought the, either one of these lots, any of the lots that are, that are running alongside the dry riverbed, uh, you, you, you're going to have to trim back the growth because you got bamboo growing up back there all over the place and there's other vegetation inside there. But I looked over an area where there was no vegetation and looked down. It's a beautiful view and I want to get that so that I can actually share that with you. Oh, I received a uh, comment from William Gibson, and William said, James, I hate to bring up anything negative, but I'm very concerned about something. You are correct in that you need a CR in the basement, a bathroom in the basement. Uh, this is just common sense, but here's the problem. You are correct in that uh, the solids may need to be pumped in 25 years or so, but the water will build up quickly with nowhere to go. And then he goes on a little bit. Oh, but William... <laughs> There is some place for it to go. I don't know if you followed it, if you looked at my, my diagram. I, don't know, I, I thought I'd put the diagram up there or I explain it. In the you, have the, you have the digestive chamber and you have the leaching chamber. And in, in the leaching chamber, the way they do things over here, it's not like it is in, in North America uh, or where I'm from in North America. There is no leaching field. Even this one's not going to have a leaching field. They actually put the leaching field as underneath the leaching chamber itself. So you have like 12 inches of rock aggregate and underneath the rock aggregate, it's, it's actually a hole that goes down into the earth and it filters. So I do have a way for the water to get out. Now the, the digestive chamber, of course, that is a, a, a sealed chamber inside here. And that's the one that the, uh, the truck is eventually going to have to come and, and do the cleaning through the, uh, through the clean outs. And there's a clean out both. I have clean out uh, uh, vents or clean out pipes in both the digestive chamber and inside the leaching chamber. For some reason, uh, I had a real slow uh, leaching going on inside there, but it, it should leach fine. And if not, again, I have the clean out that I could actually pull out if I needed to actually pull uh, the water out of there. But good good question and good observation. Thank you. And I, re and I received a comment from uh, David McNabb, and, uh, and it was re reference to what I was talking about, this lot, that, that lot I'm talking about by the dry riverbed. And I made the comment at, uh, that I told uh, Mr. Montanola, who's a developer, that you have a uh, 5 or 6 million peso lot and a 100 million peso view. Uh, the, the fiber, the, that was just a, a number that, so that's actually not what the price of that lot is over there. So for, and, I, and I gave uh, uh, David an example. The, the lots over here go for uh, 4, 000, approximately 4,000 pesos per square meter. So that lot over there, I think I told them that the it, it's like half the price. So I think the price for that one over there would be around three million pesos or something like that, which is around sixty thousand U.S. dollars. So sorry for the confusion on that. Good catch, David. You guys are always keeping me in check. Cajun Dave seven nine says, James, I was wondering if you found the Mitsubishi split system that you were looking for, and if not, I would recommend Daikin split system that has a twelve year warranty here in the U S. And hopefully they're in the Philippines as well. Uh, he gave me the address of the, uh, the local dealership up here um, in Laguna, which I don't think is that far from here. Uh, so I, I can actually look that up. I really want the Mitsubishi. Uh, so I, I, I think that's what I'm going to spend tomorrow doing, if not a little bit of time today. Uh, today was actually the solar. I was looking at the solar. But I, I really need to look at this because when they start putting all these uh, the conduit and stuff inside there, I need to make sure that they have the allocation set aside for the pipes or whatever it is to run uh, the, the tubing for the, the, the split air con system. Uh, thanks, Cajun Dave79. I will uh, look at that if I can't find a Mitsubishi a dealer around here. And I got a... Uh, I got a comment from Lee Ban. It says, soup in a plastic bag? My gosh. And he's referring to uh, uh, the bag. I, I, I get everything in a bag. I, they do everything in a bag. I don't know if you know it. You get, a, you get a soda or soft drink. They pour it inside a bag and they stick a, a straw inside and you sip it out from the bag. And the food is the same. They'll pour it inside. Or if I get rice, they put rice in there. Pretty much anything, that's how they uh, uh, package whatever you need to have packaged and you take it back home with you. But yeah, the soup in a plastic bag. Yes, that's how we roll over here. And I and I have one more that it got caught up in my spam filter. You guys don't realize if you if you send a uh, uh, message to me or a comment to me, 
and and you have a URL link on there, what happens is the spam filter catches it because it makes it look like it's an advertisement or something like that. And I got one uh, from GA Parr. He says, "Hi James, great videos. The wife and I really enjoy watching. Maybe you can look into some different solutions to the wind noise issue with the GoPro 5. I've included a link here, and he gave me a link, and that's what threw it over into the uh, the likely spam uh, container on YouTube. And he gave me the uh, he gave me the link." And uh, I can't go to because the link he gave me was a YouTube link, and I can't really watch YouTube. I can, I can review my comments and all that, but I can't open up videos here because I'm running off of my little portable Wi-Fi device. I can look at it when I get back home. But I did go to Amazon.com, and I put those search words inside there, and it's probably the same thing that he put inside there about you, you got like a lavalier that you can actually put. And I didn't know that the GoPro, the same place where you clip in for your charging on the side of the GoPro, they actually make uh, microphones that can go inside here. And I saw that on Amazon, and they have windscreens and stuff like that, so that might be an option, except I'm not going to be able to get it from Amazon.com, but maybe Lazada has that, and I can, I can look at that. And G.A. Poor also says, also, can you give a shout out to my wife, Tina, in Santa Clara, California, on the next Bahikubo time? She is your biggest fan. Tina, here's a shout out for you. <laughs> Thank you for being my biggest fan. <laughs> Okay, I think that's enough for Bayakubo time. I, I really don't need to go over there and inspect too much what they're doing because really they're they're actually doing the formwork. They're still they're still doing the stuff for the the top of uh, for the floor. We're going to pour the concrete. So I'm going to take this opportunity to go ahead and continue looking for more solar stuff and for that Mitsubishi split. So let me get to that. It's getting close to the end of the day. It's it's a little up before 30. These guys are still working. And I have been doing some research. <clears throat> and I've been very productive in the amount of time after I spoke uh, with you a little bit earlier. So I went online and I, I emailed some folks uh, for some of the things that I'm looking for. I'm trying to try source out some equipment for the house. And I went in my bag of Whirlbex right here. Remember from Whirlbex 2017, and the great thing about Whirlbex, even if you uh, don't, uh, at the time when you're going through there, you're not thinking about installing anything, let them, people are throwing stuff inside your bag, let them throw stuff in your bag, because look what I found. I'm going to show you something. Something I need, and it has to do with our cistern, is I need an uh, irrigation solution, and the irrigation solution is basically I need a pump uh, that will go down inside my cistern, and I need it like pressure regulated so that the pump only kicks on, will turn on when I do the demand, basically when I open up a valve. And I have a friend that actually has a, it's a, I think it's called Marina Europress or something like that. And, and it's actually made in, I think it's made in Italy. And he uses this, Henry, Henry, my German friend. And he showed me his whole system and I'll draw out. I'm going to have to sit down and draw out my irrigation solution that I have. Uh, but that's for another Bahai Kubo time. So anyway, I, I'm looking all over, and I can't find Europress anywhere over here. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great uh, um, item that, that works. And then I opened up my Worldbex, one of the brochures, and look here, look at this green item right here. Let me show you right, right here, this one right here. This is the uh, Marina Europress. This is the exact item I need. And basically, what it does? I'll, re I'll read you the description on here. It says. Uh, can be used as a pressure switch since it can stop the pump from running uh, when no one is using the water. It will automatically start the pump once the fixture is open. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So what I did was uh, I actually have a, a business card from the yeah right here business card, and I sent an email to this individual right here. So that's one part of the solution. I need the appropriate pump. I got to find the the size that I actually need. I actually I could probably pull that information from. Henry, because he has one also, and I took some pictures of what he has. So that was fruitful right there. That's part of that solution. Uh, I didn't. I sent an email out to uh, Solana Enterprises here for their uh, Solar Heart, the uh, the solar hot water heater uh, for the roof. So I'm expecting, hopefully, to get something back for those. I'm, I'm looking for because they got all different kind of models. They got the L series, KF series, and they have. They have all kinds of stuff to say, so I need them to tell me what uh, they think would be the appropriate solution for this. Let's see what else I have. Oh, 
I found another solar power. I, I don't even remember throwing this inside my bag. Somebody might have tossed it in there. But this is another company, and uh, they have solar power solutions. So that's the third one that I have an option to, to, uh, to uh, get information from. And then I found this other solar hot water that came from Worldbex, and uh, it's by a company called Solar. Uh, I, I like the other one a little bit better, the, the one from uh, Solar Heart. I, it just looks cool, but I got it, coolness and effectiveness is what I have to, I have to evaluate. Uh, coolness is cool. Uh, aesthetics are always good, but uh, I would rather have one that's a little uglier, but actually is more efficient and, uh, and works the best and doesn't break down on me. And then uh, there's some other things I had inside here, but I'm not worried about because they're in the later stages security, some doors, um, some stone, uh, stonework. Remember the stonework uh, that was on the uh, fa in the family room at David's place? Well, we're, we're actually changing, and we've had this planning for a while. I wasn't going to spring it, but on one of the walls that we're having inside there, we're doing the stonework instead of, instead of just plaster and paint over the plaster. So there's a sourcing for that. And if I can't get information from the sick of rep here, there's also another company called uh, uh, Drylox. Drylox is a mercenary waterproofing, and we might uh, be able to uh, find out some information from these and see if they have a solution for basements also. But I, I want to go with the sick if, if I can get that. So anyway, uh, very productive. Uh, the wind is blowing all over the place. Hopefully it's not wreaking too much havoc on the... I got my, my weird windscreen on it but the wind's coming from behind me so there's not much I can do about that well that's it for me for today I, I hope you enjoyed today uh, not a lot of stuff on the actual job site just a few little things here and there uh, the main thing is they're still putting all the form work together and uh, we're, that's, we're just one step closer uh, to getting everything formed in the next step after they get the form works in is going to be very interesting and I should be able to pass on tips as I find tips here when the with the installation of the electrical and the plumbing and things like that so anyway if you enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up uh, please share and if you have not subscribed uh, please click on that little uh, my PI dream heart in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you will get the notifications when I push a new video so until tomorrow which is going to be build day 55 build day 55 here out at Villa Feliz you have a wonderful day okay I'm actually I'm done for the day <laughs> but I got my friend here Alexis hello guys <laughs> And he said, how come you never take videos? And why don't you ever vlog when you come home in the afternoon? It's because I always close out at the site. So anyway, Hello. These, these, are, these are my end of day uh, guys that actually want to be on, on our channel. <laughs>